Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, November 27th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a quick diary from Jan today about fishing and what he did is try to follow up with some fishing emails to see how far he was able to get with them. In at least one case, he was able to get their bank account that they were using in order to have Jan transfer money into the account. He managed to have that account shut down. Now, one thing that was a little bit surprising was that the email address used by this particular fisher was active for at least three months. So that apparently is a lot more difficult to shut down or does survive quite a bit of phishing attempts. And HP Enterprises is warning off an interesting bug in its SaaS solid state drives. And the problem here is apparently a firmware issue that causes these drives to fail after 32,768 hours. So that's about three years and nine months, I believe. What matters here is the time the drive was actually powered up. And uh, yes, sounds very much like a signed unsigned issue given the number of hours. The real problem here is if you're using multiple of these drives in a RAID array and you power them all up at the same time, they will all fail at the same time, which of course is devastating in this particular use case. Apply the firmware update, uh, depending on how long you own these drives for, you may still have uh, some time left. And Twitter is reporting that a software development kit maintained by one audience is apparently used to access users' Twitter accounts. Now, this software development kit is used in various applications. The developer of the application may not necessarily be aware that this software development kit is malicious. Now, Twitter was reaching out to interested parties in order uh, to have these applications removed and may also notify users that had their account compromised by applications that use this SDK. And about two years ago, security researcher Vladimir Poland uh, did notify Kaspersky of some uh, very typical kind of vulnerabilities that allowed websites that the user was browsing access to APIs exposed by Kaspersky's browser plugins. Now, this is a very common problem. What essentially is happening here is that Kaspersky software is running a web server on the user's system, and then JavaScript calls can be used to access that particular web server. Now, Kaspersky did implement a little sort of signature for these requests to prevent some foreign requests to these services, but this signature was trivial to spoof. So come 2019 and Kaspersky released a new version of its products that supposedly fixed this issue. But Vladimir just updated his blog post and states that the only thing they really did back then was fix the specific API calls that Vladimir po pointed out as vulnerable and left others unprotected. So in this update, Vladimir is sort of following up uh, on these vulnerabilities and he has already reported this to Kaspersky and Kaspersky has made additional updates available. And Confiant, a company that uh, helps uh, filter malicious ads, uh, came out with its quarter three 2019 report about ad fraud. And uh, what it looked at here was essentially the effects of its filters and uh, what uh, malicious ads uh, they found. Kind of interesting here that malicious ads are going down, so that's kind of uh, good. Now, given that we are coming up here to the Thanksgiving holiday, most malicious ads are actually published during holidays. So uh, certainly see a little bit a spike here. And then three particular ad networks are responsible for over 60% of malicious ad impressions. 
Now, Confiant is not naming the ad providers, they're just assigning them labels. The only one they sort of point out here is Google Ads, which about is less than half of the average of malicious ads that are being uh, produced by them. Now, the report also includes the response time, how long it takes an ad provider to remove a malicious ad. No surprise here, the very popular malicious ad providers take a bit longer uh, to remove the ads. Google, again, sort of as an example here, it takes 11 days, which I think is uh, still a little bit long. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And due to the holiday weekend here, the next podcast will be published on Monday. Thanks and goodbye.